Will disclosure happen in 2018? That's what we're going to examine in this video. The first thing I want to cover is a Canadian file from a group of files called the Wilbert Smith files. According to Grant Cameron, these files are 100% undisputably authentic. In one of those files, it is recorded that the most highly classified subject within the United States is UFOs, and that UFOs are actually two points higher in classification than the hydrogen bomb. Keep in mind that these files are from the 50s. Now let's juxtapose that Canadian document with a citation from the December 16th, 2017 article in the New York Times that revealed the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program in the Pentagon. Mr. Reed said his interest in UFOs came from Mr. Bigelow. In 2007, Mr. Reed said in the interview, Mr. Bigelow told him that an official with the Defense Intelligence Agency had approached him wanting to visit Mr. Bigelow's ranch in Utah where he conducted research. Mr. Reed said he met with agency officials shortly after his meeting with Mr. Bigelow and learned that they wanted to start a research program on UFOs. Mr. Reed then summoned Mr. Stevens and Mr. In Inoue to a secure room in the Capitol. If, as the Canadian document points out, that UFOs are the most highly classified subject in the United States, does it then make any sense whatsoever that a defense intelligence agency official would get in contact with Robert Bigelow and then later with Harry Reid in regards to establishing a program within the United States government to study UFOs. To me, it makes absolutely no sense. If UFOs, the phenomenon of UFOs is the most highly classified subject within the entirety of the US intelligence apparatus, then you simply don't go approaching a billionaire, Robert Bigelow, or a Congress mem member, Harry Reid, in reference to starting a program to study UFOs. That's something that shouldn't happen when you, when you examine the level of secrecy surrounding the UFO phenomenon within the US government. This is why I theorize that the reason ATIP was initiated back in 2007 is runs far deeper than just for the sake of studying UFOs. I mean, let's face it. The DIA probably has a pocket within it that already studies UFOs and probably has done so for decades. In fact, I would be absolutely shocked if the intelligence wing of the Pentagon did not have a program, a very highly, highly secretive program already established long ago studying the UFO phenomenon. You know who needed a tip? Disclosure. Disclosure. In other words, a tip was established to be leaked to the public many years later and get the ball rolling on the disclosure process and get the ball rolling it has. I think I might have heard Corbell say that ATIP existed prior to 2007, but even if that's the case, you simply don't go to Congress, you don't go to billionaire Robert Bigelow and talk about a UFO program when UFOs are the most classified subject in the United States unless you had a reason for doing so. We are going through the disclosure process, ladies and gentlemen. Please enjoy. So in this current environment, what could trigger disclosure? Well, one thing that's fundamental that could trigger disclosure is the continuing escalation of human beings within the United States and across the world having more acceptance, understanding, and knowledge of the UFO phenomenon. Slowly but surely, the UFO phenomenon is gaining legs like never before. And you may not be overly aware of it because you're constantly acclimating to it. Right now, human society can be likened to the fable of putting a frog in a pot of water. And if you, if you make the water boil too quickly, the frog will jump out. But if you make the water slowly get hotter and hotter, the, the frog will not notice the heat getting hotter and therefore will stay in the pot and you can cook your frog. That is what we are going through right now. Sooner or later, that water is going to boil over and there's not going to be a death of a frog, but there's going to be the birth of disclosure upon our planet. The following are some key events since the Cold War that have been pushing us to a post-disclosure world. These are taken from 
Uh, Stephen Bassett's website, link is in the description. March 29th, 1993, the Clinton Office of Science and Technology receives the facts from Lawrence Rockefeller's attorney launching what would come to be called the Rockefeller Initiative. May 9th, 2001, the Disclosure Project holds a huge press conference at the National Press Club highlighting the testimony of military agency political witnesses. October 22nd, 2002, at the National Press Club, John Podesta, former chief of staff to President Clinton, calls for the release of all UFO documents in government files. November 12, 2007, Leslie Kane and James Fox hold a press conference at the National Press Club to introduce the testimony of a number of high-ranking military officers from several countries regarding the extraterrestrial issue. September 27, 2010, Robert Hastings and Captain Robert Salas hold a press conference at the National Press Club to introduce witnesses testifying to extraterrestrial-related nuclear weapons tampering incidents. April 29th through May 3rd, 2013, Paradigm Research Group holds a mock congressional hearing, the citizen hearing on disclosure at the National Press Club. 42 military agency political witnesses testify for 30 hours before six former members of the U.S. Congress. December 31st, 2015, presidential candidate Secretary Hillary Clinton tells the Conway Daily Sun, yes, I'm going to get to the bottom of it, and I think we may have been visited already. We don't know for sure, and he, John Podesta, has made me personally pledge we are going to get the information out, one way or another. Maybe we could have, like, a task force to go to Area 51. This was one of 12 instances in which members of the Clinton campaign team spoke directly to the extraterrestrial issue during the campaign. The events cited that happened before October 11th, 2017, which was the To The Stars Academy press conference, and December 16th, 2017, which was the New York Times article revealing the A-tip and uh, providing two videos of gun camera footage were of vital importance, but the truth embargo was still containable even with those events. The truth embargo is not really very much containable going forward. Moreover, the events that happened before October 11th and December 16th, 2017 were instigated by private citizenry. What happened in October 11th, what happened in December 16th, 2017, was instigated by the Pentagon, the U.S. government, and that makes it very significant indeed. UFO documentaries are exploding throughout the world. There is currently an onslaught of documentaries on the UFO ET presence subject that is raining upon all of humanity, giving us all greater knowledge and historical facts regarding the ET presence on planet Earth. Let's cover some of those. Um, unacknowledged by Dr. Stephen Greer raised a whopping $700,000 to fund it, which, which underscores how interested humanity is with the subject. Furthermore, his unacknowledged documentary, according to Dr. Greer, I believe, has been watched by a, around 100,000 people a day on Netflix. The documentary UFO and Nukes, directed by Robert Hastings, was recently released. It covers the nuclear uh, facilities being tampered with by extraterrestrial craft. Jeremy Corbell will be releasing two documentaries this summer, one chronicling the events at Skinwalker Ranch and its connection with A-Tip, and another about the life of Bob Lazar. Stephen Bassett, if he gets the funding, is planning on coming out with the documentary titled, very appropriately, Disclosure. There is another documentary coming out soon titled, Aerial Phenomenon, about a extraterrestrial visitation that took place in South Africa am among a bunch of school children. I'm sure there are many more documentaries on this subject matter that I'm not aware of that is that are slated to come out soon. And this is a natural occurrence. This is a natural extension of humanity having greater acceptance and knowledge of the facts of our world, that UFOs are real, that they've been around for perhaps since the beginning of mankind, and we really ought to study it more and learn more about it since it's part of our universe. And since denying the UFO phenomenon is nothing short of denying science. The US government is beginning to wake up. On April 25th, Tom DeLonge posted the following on Instagram. Update. 
To The Stars Academy has proudly been working behind the scenes for weeks, briefing high-level staff in the U.S. government to help inform new national security policy dealing with the UFO subject and also move the ball down the field for us all. I have personally been present in some of these talks and have had the honor of explaining my own vision for disclosure, communicating our int intent at To The Stars Academy to tell the world's biggest story through motion picture, including all of you in further scientific study and also engineer a technology that is so beyond revolutionary, it can literally change the world. DeLong goes on to talk about in that Instagram post, how To The Stars Academy is galvanizing international cooperation and support for the very first time to get the ball rolling on the UFO disclosure subject. And on around April 29th, DeLong dropped another very noteworthy Instagram post. Breaking. Former president of Brazil talks about his UFO encounter on largest national television show in Brazil. Brazil is a major spot for UFO activity, one that the U.S. Department of Defense and the ATIP program studied heavily. I hope the stories I know will come out someday. Brazil is a very important place for this subject, and having the president open up publicly, publicly about it is well big. There is an undeniable momentum that has occurred since the late 40s in which more and more people on our planet are accepting the truth that not only are we not alone in the universe, but we are being engaged by extraterrestrial races from off-world civilizations. That momentum continues to build, and right now we are hitting a crescendo. And nothing with this much momentum behind it fails to reach a tipping point. And once that tipping point is reached, the inevitable is going to occur. That being, some head of state out there is going to formally acknowledge the extraterrestrial presence here on Earth. Could it happen in 2018? With the way things are going, the fact that To The Stars Academy is going to release another video of a UFO visitation, the fact that the former uh, president of Brazil is talking about his UFO experience, the fact that ancient aliens just had an episode on mainstream television talking about ATIP, talking about the Rockefeller Initiative, talking about the UFO reality on our planet, the fact that high-level government officials are being briefed on the, on the UFO subject from To The Stars Academy. Combine this all and look at the momentum that's building, and yes, I believe it is very plausible, very possible that in this year, 2018, we could indeed have disclosure. Now, I will end this video with a singular quote that is often attributed to the Buddha. Three things cannot be long hidden, the sun, the moon, and the truth. The truth. Please don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my merch shop. Link is in the description. Or you could even become a Patreon. Or alternatively, you could just slap a like on this bad boy and I'll really appreciate it. Thank you so much and I look forward, I look to, forward seeing to seeing you in the, you next, in the next episode. episode.